Selling a home is a big decision and choosing an agent to represent your interests and get the highest price and the best terms, it can be a difficult process. There's a lot of money on the line and it's your money. And my guess is that you want to protect your return while maximizing it. Let's go over five great questions to ask an agent in order to make sure you have someone that's competent to get the job done and done well. But first, hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses and I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any real estate questions, then let me know because I'm here to help. The first question should be an obvious one, but no one ever asks it. It's as simple as, do you personally own a home? As a prospective client, you can gain a lot of insight by this question alone. From their belief in real estate as an investment to their ability to properly manage their personal finances. Because if they can't manage their own personal finances, do you really think that they're going to do a good job on yours? If the agent that you're interviewing answers yes, well, then move on to the next qualifying question. If they answer no, then you might want to move on to that next agent. If they don't own a home, then they either don't believe in real estate as an investment, and I personally believe that you need to believe in the product that you're selling, or it means they can't afford one. As I mentioned earlier, if it's due to credit reasons, then that's a red flag right there. And if it's due to financial reasons, then that means that money might be tight. And if money's tight and your commission check and you selling your house is the difference between covering this month's bills or defaulting, then they may not be providing you with the best advice that serves your best interests. Speaking of your best interest, the second question to ask is their stance on dual agency. First, it's important to know what dual agency is. Dual agency is where one agent will represent both buyer as well as seller. Yeah, this sounds great for the agent that is. This is most likely the largest purchase of a buyer's life and most likely a sizable investment for you. Don't all parties deserve their own representation? We were talking about that large commission check earlier. Now double it. Are you sure that they're going to be providing you with the best advice to maximize your sales price and get you the best terms when they are also representing the buyer and have a lot of their own personal interests on the line? You do not want to work with an agent that practices dual agency. It's illegal in some states and it should be illegal in all states. Just imagine if you were arrested for something. Would you hire the prosecuting attorney to put up your defense? Of course not. If your agent practices dual agency, then they don't have your best interest at heart. They've got their own best interest at heart. The third question should revolve around experience. How many homes did you sell last year and also in your career is a really great question. But keep in mind that it's not all about how many houses they've sold. Yes, there's no doubt you want experience. But you may not want to be with a single agent who sold 100 houses last year. You may not also want to work with someone who has a large team. It's about a comfort level here. Yes, you want an experienced agent with a proven track record. And a proven track record is recent sales. What someone sold five years ago, it just doesn't matter. But a single agent that sells 100 houses a year may not have the time for the personal service that you're looking for. You may like the idea of a proven system and more of an assembly-like process of a large team, or you may like the idea of a fit that's somewhere in between. Again, there are some levels of personal comfort here. Now, the fourth question is, how are you going to market my house? And putting it on the MLS is not an acceptable answer. Everyone puts it on the MLS, which then gets pushed out to all the other websites like Realtor.com or Zillow or Redfin or Boston2.com. Now, there's a lot that goes into that MLS listing that is really important. You need to demand professional photography. Depending on the property, you might have drone photography. That might be important. Many will most likely want a staging consultation to help work on how to properly present the house. Because remember, that staged houses, well, they sell faster for more money. You may want a 3D interactive tour as part of your marketing package, as well as a floor plan, as this is rated as the second most important item for buyers after pictures. Now, a marketing plan should also include targeted Facebook and Google marketing. And in today's day and age, video marketing has also become very relevant. Another question is, what type of marketing materials will be made available to home buyers? Are you going to just print off an MLS sheet or do you have an in-house marketing designer who's going to create a custom brochure? And then there's the off-market listing where they try to sell your house before it hits the open market. 
If an agent suggests this or is pitching this, then run. This is an agent who is only thinking about themselves and wanting to practice the dual agency that we mentioned before and wanting to double side a commission. The way you maximize a sales price is by opening it up to the entire market, not just opening it up to a small subset in the database. I personally have a database of over 30,000 people. I could easily sell double-sided houses by doing this all day, every day, but it's unethical. A seller brings an agent to maximize their sales price while getting them the best terms and conditions possible. This practice of pre-marketing, it's working for the agent, not the seller. The fifth question is around pricing. How will you price my house and what factors do you consider in determining the price? You can get a wide mix of opinions on pricing, especially for non-cookie cutter type homes. So the process on how someone gets to a price is very important. Is it just based on a whim or a feeling? Are they just coming in to tell you what you want to hear or even trying to do what's called buy the listing by giving you a very high price that they know won't sell and then plan on working you in the future in order to reduce your price? Or do they have an approach where they look at the market and go over neighborhood comps with you together and come up with a pricing range? The market conditions are extremely important when it comes to pricing. Does the agent take the time to go over the current market conditions with you? Do they understand what is going on in the marketplace? You're looking to hire the most qualified agent to get you the maximum price for your house. Their market knowledge is a very important part of, to that. If an agent can't justify their pricing, then they are most likely trying to buy your business. Buying the listing is one of the most common traits of inexperienced agents. It sets the seller up for an awful experience where they can get anchored on unrealistic expectations that ultimately end up costing them a lot of money in the end. A seasoned agent most likely won't take a grossly overpriced listing as there are upfront marketing costs and a lot of hassles that they're just not going to get paid for when the property doesn't sell. A desperate and inexperienced agent, they're going to take anything and everything that they can get and then they're just going to dig some holes in the yard to bury some St. Joseph statues because all they got is a little hope and luck. And just to make sure you got everything you paid for in this video, quick lightning round for some bonus questions. How do you handle negotiations and bidding work? That's a good one. What type of fee structure do you charge? How will you communicate with me with updates? What is your availability and do you work another job? Really important one nowadays. How will you help me navigate the closing process? And how about what sets you apart from other agents and why should I choose to work with you? Now, whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then right here, I'm your guy. I would love to chat with you. All of my contact information, it's in the description below, or you can reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Again, my name is Jeffrey Chubb, and I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time.